Attention management. It's finally coming into popularity, so here it is. I'd say if you want to improve your aim quickly, this is going to be the number one thing you should be focusing on. What's up guys, I'm Zapper, your favorite Immortal 3 Yapper. Let's get right into it. For starters, high tension is good for speed, but sacrifices some precision. Low tension is good for precision, but sacrifices some speed. Tension is like a range. You almost never want to be fully flexed, nor do you want to be fully relaxed. However, usually staying somewhere more on the relaxed side is better. For reference, if we think of tension as a scale from 1 to 10, on average we should be keeping our tension between 2 to 5 for the best results. For wider or faster flicks, that's when we jump between the 6 to 8 tension zone. Anything above 8 honestly affects precision too drastically to find consistent results. Before we move on, I'd just like to add that low tension usually results in smoother aim and high tension usually results in shakier aim. This can be a good way to identify where you currently average on the scale. There are exceptions where people aim smoothly with high tension, it's just not as reliable and I wouldn't recommend it for health reasons. Obviously, you can find where you're at simply by feeling how tensed your muscles are as well. Tension creeping. I'd say this is the biggest problem for most players. A lot of people complain about inconsistent aim and usually it's due from tension creeping. This is because as you're aiming, maybe you start relaxed, but slowly you become more tensed without realizing it. I know this happens to me a lot when aim training. I'll be popping off, on track for a new PB. Then I notice my micro corrections getting really hard and I feel my arm super tensed up. Believe me, once you've experienced this, you instantly understand why tension management is so important. The only way to really overcome this bad habit is by paying attention to your tension levels while aiming. You legit need to actively relax your arm if you feel it starting to tense up. Similarly, if you get super stressed out during gunfights, your tension will spike unconsciously. This is because your fight or flight response sends blood to your arm and forces it to tense up. And so if you find yourself getting stressed during gunfights, I'd bet money that you probably also find yourself whiffing easy shots a lot and that probably pisses you off. And I know this because that would happen to me a lot. And honestly, it still does occasionally. Essentially, the high stress causes tension and the tension results in decreased precision. In Valorant especially, precision is extremely important. And so if you're too tense, this decreased precision will induce whiffing. I'd say there's two main ways to be less stressed during your gunfights, if this is a problem for you. For one, you either need to train more and you should do this training while actively focusing on your tension management. Practice a lot, and over time you'll become more comfortable aiming with lower tension. Um, on top of this, some people feel less stressed during gunfights purely by getting more reps in. So that means playing more ranked and taking more gunfights in your ranked matches and actively working on being less stressed during these fights. Honestly, this is more of a mental thing than anything, and so there's no advice I can give you that will work like one for one, it's kind of something you need to figure out for yourself. But for the most part, like I said, it comes with experience. And if you put in the reps and get more experience, usually this problem goes away. And so what's the opposite of being stressed, you might ask? Well, being calm. So if you want the coveted calm aim, being stressed out and aiming with that extra tension can affect this big time. I know this is a big topic and there's a lot to cover, but I have a simple way for you guys to go ahead and get started practicing this. By now, most of you guys know what proper flick technique is. A fast flick close to the target and a slow, more controlled adjustment onto the target. If we apply the tension management formula to this, we want a fast, high tension flick to get us close to the target, followed by a more precise, low tension adjustment to get us the rest of the way there. If you want to practice this, I'd open up AimLab and honestly, you can pick any static aiming scenario, but my favorite is definitely VT 3-Shot Advanced. As for tracking, you should primarily be keeping low tension. A big problem people fall into when tracking moving targets is actually too much tension. And typically, this results from poor target reading skills. With bad movement reading skills, the aimer falls back on high tension to make up for poor reading skills with extra speed. When tracking with high tension, the biggest problem is that when the target changes direction, you will usually over flick. This results in a lot of wasted mouse movement and also a lot of missed shots. Not to mention, if you over flick, target reading becomes way harder as well. Imagine the enemy changes direction again while you're over flicking. Chances are, you're going to over flick again and quite literally miss every shot. So yeah, by now you should be getting a grasp as to why tension management is so important. And with good tension management, 
you can overcome a lot of the common issues people come across during a typical gaming session. If you still don't believe me yet, don't worry, we're going scientific in this bitch. This reddit post is fire, so go show Elliot some love. Stop death gripping when aim training. Hey guys, my name is Elliot and I'm a doctor of physical therapy for 1HP.org. And I work with pro esports teams in Los Angeles, 100 Thieves, Energy, FlyQuest, Shopify, etc. And I wanted to share some of my recent thoughts on death gripping. With tension aiming being in the spotlight lately, let's talk about the benefits, downfalls, and what to do if you have a death grip. Breaking the death grip habit. The problem with tension is when it is uncontrolled or turns into what we call death gripping. And there are two reasons this can happen. One, overactive sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. Number two, poor coordination, which leads to overcompensation. Stop panic shooting. <laughs> When we apply tension to a mouse when aiming, we are performing an isometric contraction of all the muscles in the hand, wrist, in order to create a rigid structure which gives us more control over the mouse, but doing this for long periods of time can lead to irritation of the muscles involved. Then he shows like all the muscles that we use, so it's a fucking lot, so yeah. <laughs> One player worked with found success after I told him to trim down some thumbtacks and tape them to his mouse. So if he gripped harder than an 8 out of 10, he felt discomfort, which trained him to dial back his grip strength. <laughs> I thought this is a pretty funny example. I don't think you need to go to this length, but yeah, I don't know. It's important enough where people are doing this to like fix the habit. So other ways to manage this are to increase the coordination of the muscles in your wrist and forearm by building the endurance of these muscles through aim training while focusing on the smoothness of movement and trying to relax instead of having to grip the mouse as hard as possible. Practice makes perfect. Oftentimes death gripping is associated with the body's overactive stress response. We can manage the body's stress hormone cortisol response long term with steady state cardio and strength training. Your body doesn't really understand the difference between psychological stress caused by intense moments in gaming and psychological stress caused by high intensity cardio. Getting your blood pumping like crazy and being out of breath are great ways to psychologically stress your body out. So training your aim immediately after performing five, three to five minutes of high intensity cardio while trying to manage your death grip. Think about holding a baby rabbit or most people say like uh, egg. That's usually the best one. Can be a great way to rewire your brain to handle high stress situations with calm and smooth aiming. Our friend and resident aim champion, Maddie, weighed in on this topic recently. Tension management is one of the keys to aim improvement, especially in tracking. While there are a host of good ways to discourage gripping the mouse too tightly, it also comes down to our experience in aiming situations and our confidence in reading and reacting to motion. A really good way to go about reducing your tension usage in aim training is to practice your reading skills. A tighter grip is the usual response to unfamiliar or unexpected motion, which is usually what occurs in pure reactive scenarios. Aaron Kovacs is one of the best, if not the best scenario, on which to develop proper reading skills and to practice minimal tension. The better you understand how to balance the tightness of your grip, the more confident your aim will feel. If you are experiencing pain from death gripping the mouse, this is your sign that your tendons are inflamed and you need to build their endurance to prevent permanent tendon degeneration. So yeah, tension management is a really cool topic. Thanks for listening to me, yep, for however long that was. Appreciate all you guys. Peace.